Hello to the folks who are just hopping on. We're going to give it one more minute here and let a few more folks join us and then we will kick it off. I see a few more folks hopping on. Welcome, everyone. We're just going to give it a few more seconds here, let a few more people join us, and then we'll get this webinar started. All right, thank you everyone for joining our webinar today. This is Migrate Your Project Data at Project Closeout with 360Sync. Today's webinar is being presented by Michael Reuter, 360Sync product manager and an expert in all things related to document management. Today, Michael is gonna be discussing the challenges of transferring large amounts of data and walk you through how you can solve these challenges with 360Sync. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and we'll for forward the recording to all registrants. You can also find all of our webinar recordings on the Evolve YouTube channel. So if you have um, any questions throughout this process, please submit them using the Q&A function in your Zoom toolbar. And we may have some time at the end of the session to go over your questions. All right, and uh, with that, I'm passing it off to Michael. Okay, and um, let's see. Uh, thanks, guys. Um, Marina, can you um allow my um webcam? It's saying that I can't show it, but um, basically the whole idea for today's meeting is to talk about how you can migrate uh all of your project files and data uh at project closeout. Um, when I went to Procore Groundbreak in uh October or November, or whenever it was of last year. I actually sat in a class where someone went through and talked about the painstaking, brutal process that they um, had to go through um, when they were uh, doing project closeout. Um, it was like an hour long conversation. And uh, the lady talked about how like she was doing a class saying like, oh, here's some pitfalls. Here's how you do this. Here's how you do that. And um, uh I, it just it took everything in my power not to like just stand up and raise my hand and say hey 360 sync can help there help help there and then finally it actually I actually just couldn't stand it anymore and um and I and I actually did that so um uh based off of that that lesson or that 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 class that was at, at Procore Groundbreak we decided to do um a webinar talking about exactly how you could do that okay so before we do that, I'm going to kick us off for a uh, uh, a poll question, and then we will uh, we'll move on to uh, the meat and potatoes of the uh, discussion and the uh, demo. And so the question is, what platform are you guys trying to migrate data to or migrate data from? Um, uh, are you trying to connect to Autodesk, Procore? Windows, SharePoint, or something else? Where are you trying to migrate data from at the end of your project? And I believe you can uh, choose multiple, but um, there you go. So for me, I can tell you when I was doing this as a BIM coordinator and as a project engineer, I was um, uh, having to copy files uh, to and from Autodesk, SharePoint, Windows, and New Forma. Um, so I guess what I would like to, if you, if you, if any of those three out there that marked other, feel free to drop in the comments what uh, what it was that you were migrating from. <clears throat> Um, okay, so let's let's talk about the problem. Okay, so as I saw in this meeting that I, that I mentioned earlier, um, uh, when when you are migrating files or when you're migrating everything at the end of a project, 
you need to do a bunch of stuff. You need to download files from um, a specific project. Typically, sometimes, uh, oftentimes, you have to manually download each file individually or maybe each RFI record or each submittal or what have you individually. That is time consuming and painful, okay? Also, you might have to create a complicated folder structure that is, you know, even more time consuming. Um, you're, and then you're basically what you're having to do is back up all of those files in one place or in multiple places. And then once you've got those files backed up, maybe you're doing that before or when you're downloading, but you have to review and confirm that all those files uh, are there. And then once you're done with that, you also have to validate that all of those files are the files that you actually wanted. Make sure that that was the stuff that uh, was required for closeout or was, um, uh, you know, or that, that if you're the owner requiring that, that, that it has the, the correct information that you need in it. Maybe you're, you're looking for that specific O&M manual um, for, for like, uh, you know, the, like for whatever, but um so so there's that's that's a super painful process talking to many of our customers it takes days weeks sometimes even months to do and so if you're going to use 360 sync the project team needs to one create a sync and that will allow them to download all the files create the folder structure uh back it up and then they can use review the logs to confirm that all the files were moved and then they need to validate the files. So that significantly cuts down the, the, the painful process of migrating files and data, okay? So if you're new to 360 Sync, some of you I see are, some of the names I recognize that are, that are in here on the, uh, the webinar, um, this is everything that 360 Sync connects to, okay? I won't bore you with all of the things, but by listing all of the things that we connect to, but take a look at this list. If it's something that you connect to, uh, if, if one of these logos is something that you connect to, 360 Sync can uh, migrate pro uh, project files to it or from it, okay? <clears throat> um. And I'll tell you a story about how I would, you know, what I had to do. So <clears throat> I, I uh, so what I would, what I had to do at the end of my project was I had to take files. Uh, I, I worked on um, large hospital projects from uh, like in, in the Carolinas. And so for my projects, what I had to do at closeout is I had to get all of the RFI data from new forma RFI and, and, and and so I so I would download that, back it up on my server, mm. or back it up on, on on a hard drive as well for my um for my um owner. Then I would have to turn around and do the same thing for uh, my project documents and um stuff like that that was in Autodesk BIM three sixty that we were using out in the field, and then I would have to go and uh, turn around and do the same thing for in CMIC for our um, change order documentation. Um, then I would have to go and from my server, I would have to update all those. Well, I would have to update my, uh, my, my hard drive for that. We were sending to the, uh, to the owner um, with, with our submittals and, and daily logs and all of that stuff as well. So I was taking stuff from multiple different locations and uh, it was it was one of my least favorite things I ever did. Um, and so when when I when we came up with this, the whole idea was, you know, you automate that file management process, that file migration process, so that you know you take the boring file management part out and automate it, so that you can manage the project better, or manage the closeout process better. Um, so that's, um, that's that now I'll do like a, a, one quick little testimonial. Okay. So this is from, uh, Gilbert Kwan, who is the BIM manager at Amgen. Okay. And so when I was talking to him recently, um, what he primarily uses 360 sync for is to, um, <clears throat> solve the GC to owner turnover problems that he has. Okay. And so, um, 
the biggest problem that he had uh, before using 360 sync was that he had to, uh, it took a ton of time to download and then sift through all the files. Um, and then after he did, after he downloaded everything, um, he would have to validate that everything was there and then validate that it was the correct version and all that stuff. And so what 360 sync did for him was it took the time consuming and mundane task of downloading all those files and it allowed him to focus instead on confirming and validating that the that the files were there and that they were the correct files. Um, and so it would he told he said that it saved him about eight hours to several weeks of time per project. And that all depended on the size of the project. Okay. <clears throat> so um, the, the whole idea here is that this can save you a boatload of time at the end of your project, uh, which is probably the most frustrating time. Okay. So before I get into my demo, I'm going to talk about a couple of things with 360 sync. Okay. So um, the typical thing that we find with our customers is that it saves about an hour a day. If you were to uh, monetize that hour to uh, whatever you were billed at, let's just say it's a hundred dollars a day or a hundred dollars an hour, I should say <clears throat> that ends up being uh, about $26,000 a year of time saved um, that where you don't have to be spending time uh, copying files. Okay. Um, we, we've been around for seven years. Um, we've got more than a hundred customers around the world over the past three months alone, we've copied or transferred 450 terabytes of data. And, uh, the whole idea, like I said, you get rid of that time that you waste copying files from one place to another, to another, and do with it what you wish. Maybe that's, uh, you know, doing more project management on your project instead of dealing with files, or maybe that's going home on time. Um, but uh, um, yeah, so that that's that. Um, and then for as for our roadmap, the things that we're planning on building into our software soon, um, we're going to have uh, notifications built in if there's errors in the cloud. That's coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, also, there will be permissions inside of the cloud. So um, the admin will be able to see all of the the other users that what, you know, what syncs they're doing. And, um, and he could transfer one to another if someone were to leave um, the, the company, et, et cetera. Um, we've also improved, we'll have improved Procore drawing workflows. Um, we recently released a uh, Procore RFI and submittal workflow imp improvement. Um, and then we're working on improving how we log our data. Uh, we're at, we already added in uh, the ability to see how much data you, you've you've moved um, on a folder level, on a file level, um, and on a workflow level. Um, and then we will also have dashboards that kind of make that that uh, data more user friendly and accessible. <clears throat> we also just recently released uh, the ability to publish Autodesk models in the while uh, from our cloud tool. Um, we're working on the ability to download those cloud models as well as Revit models instead of zip files. And then we're going to have uh, other integrations like Ignite that we're going to be building soon as well. So that's that's our roadmap. <clears throat> now, um, before I jump into my demo, let's do our second uh, poll question. And while we do that, I'm going to look in the chat and see what... Um, There we go. Now I can actually turn my thing. Now I can now I can turn my thing on. Um thanks thanks for that. Um Marina. Okay, so the question here is are there any other pre platforms that you guys would like to see us connect with? So you saw um what we connected with earlier. Uh is there anything that we're missing? Is there anything that we haven't thought about connecting to? Um I know that like like I said, uh I'm already I said the last thing I said before this was we're looking at doing a connection with Ignite uh, with directly with their API. Um, we're also uh, I've also seen a lot of requests lately for um, uh, Trimble Connect um, and Trimble Project Site. I know that I've also seen one uh, uh, some lately for Bentley. Um, 
maybe you're maybe you want to connect to an ERP system. I don't know, but let me know um, what that is that you guys are are hoping to connect with. Okay, <clears throat> so we'll give that a couple of more a couple more seconds, and then we'll move on. Um, all right. Great. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is we are going to uh, finish our little PowerPoint here, and now we're going to jump into our uh, demo, okay? So for this demo, we're going to be pretty short and sweet since I've already blabbered on uh, 15 minutes, which is usually normally, normally longer than I talk. Um, but uh, we're going to assume that you've already set up connections with 360 Sync, okay? As you can see right here, if you're looking at my screen now, we're, I'm going to show off the 360 Sync Cloud Tool. That Cloud Tool um, allows you to sync files uh, on demand, which is what we're going to do because we're simply migrating things one time. We can also um, sync files on a schedule. So if you wanted them to run daily, Monday through Friday at a certain time, you could set it up to run like that. Um, and then the third option for some of our tools um, we can actually sync in real time meaning you could copy files to from your or you could save files in your source location and then the destination location would be updated moments if not seconds later okay but basically you set up your connections uh, by putting in your username and password for logging into for instance autodesk which is what you see on the screen here same thing with procore uh, if you're going to connect to Windows, you would then uh, you would also install our Windows Sync agent on a computer, and then that would allow you to connect to whatever that computer connects to. So that could be Box or Dropbox or your server or Share Drive. But once you set those up, um, you're going to come over here to Workflows. And so you can see I've set up a, a a good little amount of these. If I wanted to edit one, I could select one. If I wanted to create a new workflow, I just hit the the orange new workflow button. And so we will call this project migration. And we'll we'll call this Procore to server. Okay. And so I'm going to come back here. And so let's see. I'm going to pull a bunch of Procores out here because what I want to do is I want to um sync a couple of things from Procore because Procore uh, is our most, that we connect to the most amount of things in Procore. Okay. So we're going to do drawings, RFIs and submittals from Procore. And then I'm also going to do for Autodesk, we're just going to do some documents. Okay. Just so that we don't leave somebody out. And then let's say we want to move this stuff. Uh, I think I should have, I think I'm going to pivot. I'm going to actually go to SharePoint. So we want to back everything up in SharePoint. Okay. So I've got my four things that I want to do here. So I'm going to, I'm going to come back in here. I should have renamed these. So we'll call this Procore Drawings. Now I'm going to rename this one to Procore RFIs. And we'll rename this one to submittals. And we'll call this one ACC documents. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to copy all of these into SharePoint here. So um, I've chosen what where I want to copy files from. And now I'm going to choose what I want to do. So like I said, we can publish models, but in today's demo, we're just going to be uh, migrating files. So we're going to call this project migration. Okay, you could have just left the name the same, but I'm going to name it specifically um, because uh, I, I just, I want to call that out. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to move Procore drawings. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to choose my company. I'm going to choose my project. I'm going to choose my document type. Okay, so I want to move drawings. So I'm going to pick right here, and then it's gonna bring up the root folder. So I'm gonna come in here and let's say I just wanna move the architectural, Let's see, I think I saw electrical up there. 
I'm going to move architectural, electrical, mechanical, and plumbing, and then structural. Okay. So I'm going to move those four folders to SharePoint. So I'll pick a project. <clears throat> Okay, give me a second. Sorry about that. Need to, that SharePoint, I need to delete that SharePoint connection. I will pick this one. All right, now we'll do this one more time. Sorry about that, fellas. Sorry about that, everybody. Procore drawings. Okay, and then last one, structural. <clears throat> okay, so we'll go to SharePoint. Then we will pick our projects. So I'll just pick Archer Western. <clears throat> then I'll come down here and we will call this, uh, let's see, migration demo. Now we're going to drop everything into there, okay? And so, so, so again, I could sync now, or I could schedule it, or I could run it in real time. Since we're just migrating, I'm just going to choose sync now, okay? So I'll hit save and sync. So while we're doing that, I'm gonna while we're waiting on that one to go, I'm going to um, drop another action on here, and I'm going to set up another one, okay? Since we want to move. all this other stuff. Okay. So now we're going to move RFIs, pick the company, pick the project, pick RFIs. Same thing, I'll pick SharePoint, pick the site again. demo and then I will pick that folder. Okay. <clears throat> Same thing. Okay. Do the same thing a third time here. And so on and so forth. So the whole idea here is that we're taking all of the, the uh, re relevant um, uh, project data, and we're downloading it all to one important place. So, like, I think I started this at two fifth or at two uh, seventeen. So, uh, we we'll, we will take what something that would have take uh, taken probably less than taken that'll take me less than ten minutes here, uh, and then we're gonna we're gonna in and that process probably would have taken hours, if not days, um, otherwise. Uh, okay, sorry, I got a... Okay. Then finally, last one, we're going to move some documents <clears throat> from Autodesk. So the reason that I chose Procore three times and Autodesk one time is not because, hey, most people want to get out of Procore 
or want to get out of Autodesk. It's just to show you we could connect to multiple things, okay? Um, we can connect to multiple things at once. So I'll come over here. I'll pick this company, which is mine. I'll pick this project. And then again, if I wanted to, I can move all of my project files. So if I needed to do that, I could do that. Or if I wanted to move just specific things, I could do that as well. So if I wanted to move this folder and this folder and these this this one as well, then I could do so. So we'll take this one also to SharePoint. And we'll go to that same project. There we go. And same thing, we will sync it now. Okay. So now basically here's what we're doing, right? We are taking Procore drawings to SharePoint, then RFIs to SharePoint, submittals to SharePoint, and then finally uh, all the, the documents, okay? <clears throat> so you set this up. <clears throat> um, took me, uh, I think, nine minutes to do that. I think I started at 2.17 when I was setting this up. That include my little snafu with SharePoint. Um, took me seven minutes to do that. <clears throat> now I've now I'm I'm migrating all my files and stuff to there. From there, as soon as those start coming in, I can now start validating them, or I can start confirming that you know one the files made it. I can do that by looking at my logs, and or I can do that by just looking in the data source that that particular SharePoint project, and then I can actually start also validating that those have the correct data inside of them, okay? Also, let's say this is always how you set up a project, okay? If that's the case and you wanna have make this even faster for your next project that you need to migrate, we have a templatizing um, uh, solution for you. So we'll call this uh, um, project migration, okay? So now all you have to do the next time that you build another workflow is you just need to reference that template that I just named, that project migration template, and then all of this will already be built. And all you'd really have to do is come over here and click edit, and then change the project and the folder that you need to connect to. And you do that th those four times, and you're good to go. So that's uh, pretty much it. So I guess, are there any questions, any comments? Um, Okay, I'll give everybody a, a, another couple moments to do that. Otherwise, if not, um, I guess uh, I'll, I'll start closing out right now. Just saying thanks for uh, jumping on. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Um, hopefully you'll understand, uh, you know, project migration can be pretty easy with 360 Sync. Um, also, um, for attending this webinar, we are offering, if you don't already have 360 Sync, um, um, if if you if you're uh, if you're attending this, then um, we'd be happy to provide a 10 percent discount for uh, if if you were to purchase. Okay, so you'll see that in the uh, email um, <clears throat> uh, th after thanking you. So um, uh, if if you guys decide to do that, then then we're happy to to uh, provide a demo and a trial. Uh, a demo or a trial, and then um, uh, give you a 10% discount. Um, I did get one question in from Melinda. Hi, Melinda. Good to see you, or good to, to hear from you. Um, you said you can select mul multiple folders to sync. You don't have to do individual mappings, correct? Okay, so yes and no. Okay, so yes, if you just wanted to move specific folders from, uh, like, let's say the drawings or the documents tool, you could you could check multiple boxes like I did when I was doing the drawings tool or when I was doing the documents, okay? So you could select the entirety, you could select everything, or you could select three or four or 10 or 11 or however many you want folders, okay? Um, or maybe all but one folder. You could, you could choose to do that. So And then, then all you'd have to do is build one little uh, mapping here, okay? But if we're talking about connecting to the submittals tool and the RFIs tool and or the drawings tool in Procore, then you would need to create a new map or another 
mapping, like similar to like how I did here to do that, because those are different tools. And so you need to create a connection to, to those different tools because um, I don't know, that's just the way that it works. I could see in the future where, where we would make it, where maybe we could select multiple, but um, there you go. <clears throat> then I see, can you filter files? Great question. Um, yes, you can. I'll show you how that works. Um, the way to filter files, you can filter by file type. So if you just wanted to filter, um, for instance, um, <coughs> um, PDF files, you could do that. Okay. Or maybe you wanted to do PDF and um, Revit models, you could do that as well. Okay. Or any combination of any, any of the other file types that you see here. So yes, you can. Um, okay, next question. If you migrate, let's say an RFI, is it possible to migrate its attributes too if the end platform has the same attributes? Okay, great question. So in the so right now, what we do is from Procore, we download it's it's the same as clicking export RFI, okay? And it gives you two options, right? It gives you the option to download the um the cover sheet. Uh and then uh and then also gives you the option to download the cover sheet and the attachments. And so what 360 sync does is one, it creates a folder with that RFI name underscore RFI title or description or whatever it is right and then it drops the 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 um it drops the cover sheet in there that has the links to the files in procore and then it also downloads the attachments and places them in that folder <laughs> if you're asking can we move the the actual physical data from one place to another it is feasible to do that and that's something that I will I hope to get to this year but right now 360 sync does not copy the data. The main reason for that is that we don't have a place to put it. I actually am already downloading the the RFI and submittal data like those that that those attributes so to speak from Procore, but I can't put them into Autodesk yet. That's part of why I'm looking at doing Ignite next because I'll be able to take data from Ignite and put it into Procore or vice versa. Okay? Um, but that's, yeah, I would say that's a future, that's something that I will be able to do in the future. Um, so let's see. Mark just asked another qu a question. Uh, may not apply. To, can you sync based on the fact that a f the file has changed? Yes, you can. Okay. <clears throat> so we have two ways to do that, Mark. First thing we can do is we can um, we can um, choose to schedule it to run, right? So if you wanted this to run daily, okay, um, then you could choose when you wanted this. You could choose to have it check to see if any files were updated. So let's say that we wanted this to run at 4.33 in the morning. Then I could have it run at 4.33 every day, Monday through Friday. Um, but as well, let's say you wanted it to run in real time, we could do that as well. So what I mean by that is, let's say um, on a day-to-day -day basis, you are updating your, obviously our files are being added and updated on a day-to-day -day basis on a project and you wanted those to be backed up. You could have it sync the RFI tool in real time. And then basically what that means is as soon as a file, uh, an RFI is created in Procore moments, if not seconds later, it would copy that um, cover sheet to SharePoint, okay? Um, same thing with submittals or Autodesk. And so the next obvious question that I get after that is why even have scheduled sync? Well, the reason for that is because thing, we, we connect with New Forma and ourselves, which is Foresight and Plan Grid. And those three things do not have webhooks, which allows us to do, perform a real-time sync, okay? So <clears throat> we still have the schedulability if you are trying to take files or data from those places and can't. <clears throat> um, how do you mirror the destination location from the source? So, are you, uh, so uh, Melinda, I, I'm wondering if you're asking if uh, 
can you delete files? Is that what you're asking in in the cloud? Or like you want you want the 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 source to have like to always be mirrored with the destination. Um, so right now I don't have the ability to delete um, any files. I well, by design we wanted to make sure that the uh, that our real time sync stuff worked um, <clears throat> before we did that. However, with our desktop tool, we can we can mirror everything there, um, and and I would say that probably within four months, four to six months, I will have the ability to do the mirror sync, which is which is exactly what you're talking about, Melinda. <clears throat> um, but to 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 do a mirror sync uh, in the desktop, um, basically you would go to your project, hit advanced settings. And then you would uncheck this keep destination files box. Okay. And that is exactly that's that's I've got it drawn out already. We've got the UI built for that. I just haven't written the code to migrate these advanced settings to the cloud. I, I would say that that's something that we will do in four months or less, I hope. Four to six months or less. <clears throat> Uh, and then uh, Melinda, I will make sure to to put you on the. Uh, uh, I'll add you to that ticket as well, so that that moves it up the list. Um. <clears throat> okay. Um. Wow, got a lot of great questions today. Um. Let's see. Um, let's see anything else from any any other questions? All right. Well, um, appreciate everybody's time today. Um, uh, if you have any questions about what you saw, if you want a demo, if you want to trial it. If you want clarifications because you already have 360 sync, um, I'm always available. I'm the person that you'll talk to whenever we're talking about uh, anything 360 sync. I'm more than happy to discuss with you uh, whenever you would like. Uh, look forward to hearing you get to, to talking to you guys soon too. So um, have a great rest of the day and thanks for your time, everybody. <clears throat>